watching Good Morning Britain while petrol stations closing, pumps running dry and motorists queuing to fill up. It's the fallout of the HGV driver shortage that is plunging our supply chain into crisis. BP says it's struggling to transport oil from its refineries to its stations with retail giants Tesco and smaller independents being forced to shut some of their forecourts. So we're joined now from Coventry by Paul Chima, whose own forecourt ran out of petrol yesterday, and consumer journalist Harry Wallop, who joins us now from Birmingham. Good to see both of you this morning. Paul, what happened? Was it literally as grim as it sounds that the supplies just didn't show up? Did you get any kind of notice or preparation time? Yeah, so morning. So, look, um, our supply partner's pretty good. So, Texaco have been really good. We're communicating uh, and engaging with us and telling us what's going on. Um, so, you know, there's no blame to te Texaco here. I think the big problem is driver shortages and where are the drivers? Um, and how's that helping me run my, my site here? We ran out of a leaded yesterday at 5.30. And already this morning we've seen panic buying and um, to the right of me we've had to switch off the diesel lane already because, um, you know, people have gone crazy when there's uh, really no need to panic buy because there's plenty of fuel there. We just need drivers. Right. So the problem is for you is that when you close those pumps, it sends an instant signal to your customers that there's a problem and suddenly your business is instantly in trouble. Yes, so look, we don't just lose money outside on um, selling, selling the fuel outside. As soon as the, you know, the yellow uh, cover goes on the nozzles there, um, you know, the customer's driving straight past. We're also losing uh, that income inside the store. Yeah. Uh, we're a community uh, forecourt here in Tile Hill, um, you know, and we need the customers in. So, Paul, we're watching all these cars pulling mm. up behind you and, mm. and coming past. Are they pulling in to try and get petrol and realising all the pumps are empty and just having to drive out? Is that the situation? Yeah, that's the situation this morning. And look, we've, this morning, I've been here since, you know, 5.30 this morning. Uh, that's not unusual for me. Uh, but, you know, a lot of elderly are coming this morning and, you know, looking at the pumps and we're saying, look, sorry, we haven't got no unleaded. Hopefully we'll get it tomorrow. Um, but the problem is we're ordering a week in advance blind now, whereas before we'd order a day or two in advance and then the delivery will get cancelled. So I think... That we, it, it's a driver problem, and I think government's now got to step in and start understanding the problem and helping us retailers, of whatever size we are, to, to resolve this. OK, stay there for a moment, Paul, because let's talk to Harry Wallop, who's a consumer journalist. Uh, often, Harry, we talk to you around Christmas time about what's going to happen with, with food, particularly in deliveries, but this is a big issue. We're only uh, coming towards the end of September, and already we're nervous about deliveries for Christmas. But for Paul and for all the, the, the petrol retailers around the country, this is already starting to bite. How have we got ourselves into this situation? And Paul's saying the government needs to do something about it. What can they do? Well, yeah, I mean, let, let's, let's be really honest here. It is a very serious problem for the government. Uh, I can remember when the petrol crisis of 2000 nearly brought down the government of Tony Blair. Uh, it, it really brought the country to its knees. You, you, you have this kind of knock-on effect. Mm. And the, the key thing is uh, it's been caused, as Paul says completely accurately, by a shortage of HGV drivers. We're basically about 100,000 drivers short through, through a combination of factors. It's Brexit, uh, it's COVID, it's a change to the tax law, but we just don't have enough drivers. There haven't been enough drivers for the supermarkets, there haven't been enough drivers for the pubs, for the restaurants, and now we're seeing it, not enough drivers uh, for the petrol stations. But petrol stations, arguably, are far more important, uh, certainly for the infrastructure of the country, than, say, loo rolls. You know, we all kind of laugh now, looking back at the crisis, uh, when people panic bought loo rolls. Panic buying petrol is far more serious. But how so, must the government have seen this coming? You don't lose 100,000 HGV drivers without having some sense that they need to do something sooner. There's a number of elements that have gone into making this happen, but we're getting lots of viewers get in touch today saying the DVLA have got a huge backlog in terms of processing people's licences, and that's stopping some of them from actually getting back to work as HGV drivers. Absolutely. Uh, that is one of the problems. Uh, the lack of tests. 25,000 fewer HGV drivers joined the industry uh, during 2020 because the, just the testing sites shut down during COVID. And we've yet to catch up with the backlog. At least about 15,000, 20,000 drivers went back to Europe 
because mostly because of Brexit, uh, because COVID, they hadn't seen their families, and because wages have gone up considerably in Europe compared with where they have gone up uh, in the UK. Now, in the last couple of weeks, in fact, wages have actually really shot up for HGV drivers in the UK. But but arguably, that's, that's just too late. It's going to take a really long time for that to filter through, for enough people to think, oh, OK, I might think about becoming an HGV driver. You've then got to actually find somewhere uh, who will allow you to take your test. It's going to take, you know, this is going to take quite a few months to sort out. Mm. The government has says they're speeding up the testing process. They're going to bring on an extra 50,000. But most people say that's going to be well after Christmas before we actually start to see the benefit of this. Harry, what, what, what we're seeing is the perfect storm that we're talking about in all areas, isn't it? The pandemic has had a knock-on effect in so many different areas. And what it's also done is highlight underlying problems that were there already. I mean, we've been talking about the problem with HGV drivers on this show for a long time. However, there are some short-term options that the government could do, couldn't they? For instance, they could allow a relaxing of the rules, the Brexit rules of drivers from abroad. That would fill the gap. Why do you think they don't look at some of these solutions? Well, I think they have looked at these solutions because everyone in the industry has said this is the easiest short-term fix. Won't solve the problem long-term, but there are many, tens of thousands of highly skilled European HGV drivers across on the continent. And it is a skilled job. You know, if, if you tried reversing an HGV, HGV, I wouldn't want to do it. So you can do that in literally, you could flick a switch and you could persuade so they, some of Harry, those then? drivers to come across. Is it politics? They don't want to be seen to have given in. Is that what we're talking about? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not a politician. I don't want to get involved in the row. But yes, from what I understand, it is ideological. The whole point was that, you know, Brexit, we take back control of immigration. And, uh, and these HGV drivers weren't, many of them weren't entitled to settled status. So the government wasn't, doesn't want to be seen to be saying, oh, OK, we do need these mm. relatively low paid, relatively low skilled jobs uh, to be doing doing the jobs that British people could be doing. But it's the same with, you know, you know, fruit pickers in the fields. There just aren't enough British people who are either want to do it or are able to do it. And there are plenty of Europeans who can do it and who do want to do it. And the government isn't prepared at the moment to grant them temporary visas to come over here. But everyone in the industry, supermarkets, road hauliers say that is the short term solution. Uh, Paul, let's come back to you for one last comment, because clearly for you, it's, it's, it's what you're living right now. What do you need the government to do? And, and are you optimistic that this can get turned around in the next few weeks? Well, look, look I hope so. Look, we're an independent family uh, run business here, Malcolm Stores. Look, you know, we need to survive um, to keep going. Um, our, our staff are all employed from the community. Um, and, you know, I think the message to the government is, look, you know, let's act on this, let's deliver on what's needed, you know, whether it's the fruit farms, whether it's uh, uh, packing houses, we need the fuel on the ground uh, to survive. And I think now the government has to, got to start listening, um, you know, to in individual family-owned businesses as well. I mean, uh, the PLRA did a fantastic job yesterday getting the message over, um, and I think now the government has to listen.